Okay, we're back. We are back. We're back. We're back. Okay. <laughs> Invite your followers again. Come on back. Amen. Come on, let's fill up the room. I hope that's not what makes Periscope crash like that. What? When people start really going in or whatever. But come on in. Come on no, in. All our replay viewers, how you doing? I know some people are at work and they'll be seeing this a little bit later but come on come on you do not want to miss tonight it's very rare that you get uh, me and my wife on here i mean the very nature of our ministry uh, is deliverance yep you know very prophetic um because i'm a prophet apostle i just kind of learned that uh, <laughs> thanks paula price um then she's a apostolic prophet um which that's so crazy um and an emerging apostle herself no i'm just playing <laughs> she hates when i do that but um come on invite your friends your followers let's dig into this i want to give you these scriptures okay i want to give you these scriptures um these actually talk about uh, what happens at midnight and the midnight cry um but um, Exodus 9 and 1, okay, Exodus 11, 4 through 7, 12 and 29, Judges 16 and 3, Ruth 3 and 8, 1 Kings 3 and 20, Job 34 and 20, Psalm 119 and 62. Mark 13 and 35, Luke 11, 5 through 10, Acts 16 and 25, Acts 20 and 7, and Acts 27, 27. All those talk about what happens at midnight uh, when a cry goes out from the people at midnight. That's right. Invite your friends, invite your followers. And we do that because I want to expose not just church people, but people that may not you know, we hear a lot about different types of ministry. We mm. rarely hear a lot about uh, deliverance ministry. Mm. Mm. Okay? And Tina said one more time. I don't have to inbox y'all them <laughs> scriptures. I'm afraid to give them to you before this thing act a fool again. But um, one thing that I want to drop uh, before we go on is that in order to understand, and I always give this out. She said, oh, <laughs> I'll give it out. In order, because I actually... Have a prayer at the end of this that I want to arm you guys with. Is that okay? Is that all right? Nobody else has this prayer. That's what the Lord gave. Okay? Lord, we pray and we bind every electromagnetic wave that's getting out of order. In the name of Yeshua, I send the blood in the airwaves. Yes, Lord. Okay? Mm -mm. The Hebrew word, and I want to say it right, the Hebrew word for tabernacle is mishka. You have to have mishka thinking when you're trying to understand God, okay? That's tabernacle thinking. Outer court, inner court, most holy place. So when you start to break down the word of God in those three triune parts, you understand it a little bit better, okay? Uh, we talked about deliverance starting at Genesis 1. Noah and the ark was a form of deliverance. Also, Moses and Exodus, the Egyptian uh, slavery, the exodus of, e uh, of Israel from Egypt is a form of deliverance, okay? In the Old Testament, if you had another spirit operating in you, they didn't pray for you, they killed you, okay? Because they were under the law, they weren't under grace, okay? That was their way of deliverance. Let's get you out of here manually, okay? The only way to break away from a spirit before Christ was to repent and actually make a sacrifice, turn and worship to God. Jesus became the word of deliverance because until he came, we were still bound by the sacrificial system, okay, which covered our sins, but did not have the power to expunge them out or remove them, okay? There are seven steps to demonization, and then we're going to hit the real good stuff. Me and my wife are going to be going back and forth uh, in and out of this, okay? Seven steps to not demonic uh, possession, but the the real word is called demonization, and mm. anyone can be demonized. Anybody. Anybody. You know, now. Even your dog. Right. Now, the True. highest level. Y'all, excuse me. 
cracking my neck and everything. <laughs> but the highest level of uh, demonization for a Christian is oppression, demonic oppression. Okay. A true Christian should not be, I'm not going to say could not, should not be possessed by a devil. That's right. Okay. Or, or accurately saying a demon. Okay. Because devils don't possess anyone. Demons possess anyone. I know the old world word for demon was devil, but we do know that they are two different things. That's right. Okay. Devils basically are fallen angels. They descended upon Mount Hermon. They slept with the women in Genesis six. The women birthed out giants when the giants died because their spirit was between, uh, human and angel mm -hmm. doomed angels fallen angels they had no place to go so they were basically a hybrid messed up creation because god didn't create them this was a byproduct of something off or damnable so their spirit became demons okay that's why the lower tones that's why the great strength uh they are the children or the spirits of the children of the fallen angels that slept with the women in Genesis chapter six. Okay. Demons and devils or demons and fallen angels are not the same thing. Right. You're looking at daddies and you're looking at the kids. Got it. Okay. Right. All right. Deliverance prerequisites and protocol. Number one, prayer. And baby, you know how to just jump in just like hopscotch. Okay. Prayer. Very, very important. Number one, being dressed in the whole armor of God. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Number two. Okay. okay. Prayer is a must. Don't do any kind of deliverance. Now, let's set this up. Come on. Exorcism and deliverance are two different things. Yes, Lord. <laughs> An exorcism that. is the practice. Now, I don't know if Terry McCall's on here, but she told us to do the scope. So, we're doing this for you, Terry. It's All the replay be viewers. <laughs> okay, you ready? Where you at, Terry? <laughs> <laughs> All right, because exorcism is the practice of summoning or conjuring a ooh, conjuring spirit. It made me think about purging, yeah. but conjuring a spirit so that um, it that demon can cast out another demon. Yes. Okay. Now there are certain ranks of spirits, but you don't call on another demon to cast out another demon. That's right. Because it's not going to happen. Okay. That's who that. Long, long. Hey, boo. Hey, and, baby uh, girl. I don't know who that was again. But uh, number two. <laughs> um, deliverance is calling on the power of the Holy Spirit, the yes. availability of the blood of the Lamb, yes. and the power of God to bring someone back into order. When we're bringing things back in the rightful order, we are making earth like heaven. Think about it. Mm. Is anyone sick in heaven? Is anyone oppressed in heaven? Is anyone demonically oppressed or down in heaven? No. No. So we're bringing as it is in earth. We want it to like we, same thing as it is in heaven. You want to do that's how we want to do it on earth. We want heaven to kiss earth. Okay. All right. Number two, you must, and, and people don't like it when I say this, but it's the truth. You must be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. How can you fight in the spirit without the Holy Spirit? Y'all, somebody ain't going to like this. Now, when I say Holy Spirit, I don't mean tongues. Holy Spirit is not shandobo karabasatata. Although you do need ikandiobo sata. You need that in your life, okay? Mm -hmm. Building up your most holy faith. That's communication between you and God. Angels nor demons understand that, okay? Very important. But the Holy Spirit is the anointing and the power of the Lord. It's the depth of the Lord. It's the wisdom of the Lord. So how can you deal with spirits that are over hundreds of millennia, hundreds of millennia, years old, and think that just getting saved two days ago, you're going to take down a principality out of rank, out of your lane, out of your ballpark. And it's not a bad thing saying that. It's just... 
if you just got saved, you shouldn't really even be battling a principality unless you oh, really God. got a very powerful call. Come on. You know, and, and folks just don't know about it because it can be dangerous. Even me as an apostle, I have to, how you speak in tongues the correct way. Okay. That's dealing with protocol in church. There's a spirit on everything. Yes. There's a, I always teach this, catch the spirit of a thing. Yes. If you're worshiping, your tongues or someone knows your worship tongues versus somebody that's just loud speaking in tongues and want attention or yes. someone that's boisterous in tongues that's been given the floor to speak in diverse tongues so that the answer can come in the gift of interpretation from another person in the congregation. Now, we were taught, even uh, my wife was before we met, was so awesome about our assignment uh, God was training us to handle each other in the spirit before we got together. So we were trained to the point, I don't know, did they let you interpret your own tongues? If that happened? Now they kind of, they taught us how to, yes. but in services they didn't let us practice that. You know, if you felt that coming out of your spirit, you could prophesy. You felt what the Lord was saying, but the interpretation of diverse tongues it's something we don't see a lot of nowadays and you don't. because of the lack of teaching on it. Yes. You know, and the lack of the atmosphere on it. And then number two, just error all over the church. So no one's exactly. really that that gifts not being exercised. And folks fake speaking in tongues. They making up tongues. They still in tongues. These tongues, they ratchet. They beat up. They stank. They old. They ain't real. <laughs> I have a little cute I'm little. I'm just saying. Yeah. I have a cute little story. Um, someone at our old. So church. when you be hearing people saying "hot shot to Yoba," that's a made up tongue. That's that's not that's not real. I'm sorry. If that's your tongue, you need to change it. Yeah, and I would challenge you to get in yeah. prayer and let the Lord give you your prayer language. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes we get around people and we uh. we pick up their prayer language, and you sometimes you can't even help it, and you be like, uh, 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 artificial tongue. Uh, I don't want your tongues. Right. Yeah, I don't want to play with that. So there was a woman that, um, yes, tongues cannot be taught. No. No. But you can teach on tongues. Isn't yes. that something? Okay. Now, listen. What's awesome is there was a woman of God, we can write back to this, that was in a church. She was in an Anglican church. Mm -hmm. And they were worshiping. And I didn't get the Holy Ghost calling on Jesus. Now, some people did. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't either. I wasn't going G, 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 G,
I don't she know. She spit on the woman's foot. But the woman came back and she had no game, nothing. That girl wow. didn't, she didn't have anything on that foot, though. They were talking about amputating her foot. And to this day, the woman still got their foot from what I know of, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, this bishop um, was raised from the dead. Many yeah. times, many yeah. times. Bishop so, Coburn. Yes, Bishop Samuel Coburn. He is gone. Lord, I hate he gone. But I'm telling y'all, we sat and we taught. We were taught and we learned. Yeah, and he called me up because he said, somebody got a headache right here. I don't know what I said. It's me, Bishop, because I'm tired of it. I ain't got no <laughs> Tylenol. I ain't got no ibuprofen, no nothing, no Advils. So he said, okay, come on. Come on, daughter. And I went up, and the Lord healed me of the headache. He did. I mean, the headache went like that. And as soon as it went, I was filled instantly with the Holy Spirit. Wow. And I was speaking in tongues. I remember it because um, that particular day, his daughter was my best friend at the time. And she was not there. She was not there. And I was wanting her to be there. And uh, he say, have you heard of David Terrell? Actually, I have. I don't I don't know how I I know that name very well and I'm trying but it'll come back to me where I know. And so actually she wasn't there and I remember trying to drive and God shielded and covered me all the way from Westwood. You know how far mm -hmm. Westwood is and you coming all the way up here to Kirby. So that's a long drive. So God covered me from Westwood um, in Memphis, Tennessee, all the way up to my destination, which is actually a 30 minute drive, just to just let her know you know I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, the very first gift that was activated, because see, people think when you get tongues, that's when you, you stop right there, you anointed, and I know I speak in tongues. And <laughs> the first thing that happened to me, the first gift that was in op operation was not prophecy, yes. it was discernment. Yep. The very first gift that and I, I teach life. that the first gift that the prophet needs to if you want to pray for anything, uh, if you're a prophet, don't pray for prophecy. Please pray don't. for the spirit uh, or the, the discerning of the spirits. spirits. Okay, that's, that's one of the uh, nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's nine fruit. There's nine gifts. Yes. Okay. Now, um, like I said, there was a woman in the church in a very very. Uh, Presbyterian church. Mm -hmm. That's what it was, and they were worshiping, and the worship got so high. And she said, it just felt like I was going to fly away. The worship was so high. And all of a sudden, she just started going. She started singing in tongues. So the people in there said, oh, my God. It's oh, a, I remember that. You're a witch. <laughs> what's wrong with you? I remember that. Shantae, what's going on? And she tried to stop. She said, I'm not a witch. <laughs> I'm just, the worship was just. She couldn't. I know you're laughing now, but she couldn't stop. She could speaking. not stop. Nope. She said she got in her car. Oh, you see, I can't. Mm -mm. She got her in her car and went home speaking in tongues. Under the power of the Holy Ghost. Yep. Next. You must have no bias or prejudgment okay. when yes. operating in deliverance ministry. Do you think now I'm I'm, I'm not I, you're not going to like everybody God wants you to pray for. My God today. And if you God. like them before you pray for them, that could be somebody that God don't want you to pray for. That's right. Because that could be a soul tie that can interfere with that person's real deliverance becoming full and complete. And I want to also throw this in. This is one of the very reasons why, and I hope some of these people are watching. We got moved. I'm not saying names. Got okay, got you. But this is one of the reasons why I do not like being on the phone. Because sometimes the longer we're on the phone, the more I know your business. And if God gives me a word, then for some apparent reason, you'll feel that, okay, she only gave me that word because, you know, she kind of being biased right now. I even got some spiritual sons and daughters in the spirit right now that'll, that'll tell you, oh, when she answered me, you know, she being biased because they spilled their life story to me. So a lot of times, I'm just going to be real, Debbie, <clears throat> Lord, I said that name out loud. I'm sorry. 
I got to cut chocolate covered strawberries though. But anyway, a lot of times I dodge phone calls because I want God to deal with me concerning the person. Because some of y'all, you may say, man, you don't hardly ever talk to me. We only talk once or twice a week. And you know what? Well, that's good. It should be like that. Because some of y'all, I hold y'all so near and dear to my heart to where I feel like if you tell me everything, I'm going to be ready to fight. And that's not how I need to be. I need to be hearing what it is that the Lord is saying. And sometimes the longer that I go without hearing from you, the more God deals with me about you. Now, I may never tell you. But the Lord will begin to deal with me. And you never know how we begin to intercede or how Jamie, I mean, Jamila used to say, intercess, intercess in your commonality, sleep. <laughs> commonality and familiarity taints the prophetic. Yeah. You can't prophesy if you already know. That's it. You know, if you're giving something, then you're ministering to the person out of what you know. Exactly. But if you're prophesying, you're giving it to them according to the mind and the heart of God. That's mm -hmm. something you don't know. Exactly. Okay. So prophets cannot be common. No. If you're common, it's going to familiar. It's breeze a familiar spirit. That's right. Okay. That? And it's. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's right. Oh, and it's that. <laughs> That's prophet. Okay. Heck. That's right. Again, be led by the spirit of God and go for the fruit, not the root. Come I hope y'all taking notes. So I'm going to help you. <laughs> There's no such thing. As a nicotine demon. Come on. There's no such thing as a double eye demon. There's no such thing as a slew foot demon. There's no such thing as, you know, a blue toe demon. I'm just saying, because people say all kind. I bind you little fairy gay spirit. Come out of here, you little drunken bastard spirit. Yeah, we Come out of here, you devil you. And I'm a you know, there was even a, there was even a woman of, there was even a woman of God <laughs> that prayed and she was so in her flesh, I hate to say that. Yes. In her flesh told the devil to get his lion ASS yes. out of the church. She sure did. I don't want to elaborate. He wasn't know. there. I was there for that he, one. Yes. My God. Yeah, we like uh Sunshine uh Anderson or whatever in there. She Heard said, it get all out of before. here. Get out, Satan. Get your blankety blank, blankety blank up out of here right now. We were like, my God, devil. Go get the oil. Jesus. <laughs> get Listen, on the altar. We were in a communion line, and yeah. one of the mothers was holding <laughs> the crackers for communion and started oh my God. cussing yeah. up a storm because she didn't want to hold the communion crackers. We've now, you it. know that's a demon. You if cussing. you holding communion, cussing. Baby, you plan on going to sleep just like the scripture said? I don't want to hold the beep beep crackers. Ooh. Oh no, I'm I'm going over here for my wine. I, I don't want to go to hell. That crack ain't sending me to hell. I'm sorry. Okay, let's move on. Help us, Lord. <laughs> okay? okay, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. That's I a have sacrament. To break away. Uh, Babies. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. I got to okay. get rid of my well, baby. Providence will be back if you hear any noise. It's a third guest in the room that some of you have met, but a lot of you kind of have not met. And her name is Josie the Yorkie. So if you hear a dog go off, we're praying for her deliverance as well. Moving on. Because <laughs> she hears sounds and she goes bananas like a monkey. Although she's a dog. Okay. So I'm just warning you hear a dog go off. Pray for her. Alana said, my whole left side. <laughs> At least she doesn't do like choo-choo. Choo-choo will go. Rawr. It cracks me up. Sounds like a pirate. But anyway. Oh, we release this teach now. We bind up any freezing. Okay. When you're taking someone else, how do you get help or mentor to help the perfect? Ooh, church hurt. That's deliverance too. Find someone that's not connected to your situation to pray for you to bring you through some type of deliverance. Why are we connected to stuff that's out of order? You have to find out what that root is. You know, sometimes things come down through a bloodline and uh, it's a spirit of inheritance. All the stuff you go through ain't yours. You got to ask God. Was this mine or is this something that I inherited from my forefathers? Okay. Going on, when you're going through deliverance, you must stay calm and level as much as you can. 
I've seen people go through deliverance and it's someone's daughter and the mother run up and start crying while the daughter's crying, trying to get a demon out. That familiar soul tie keeps that demon in charge of the situation. And you strengthen, like the word says, you then strengthen the hand of the evildoer. OK, so no, no common stuff, no familiar stuff in deliverance because you can actually stop the progress of someone's deliverance. Make sense. OK, let's see. No charisma and fanaticism is needed when you're doing deliverance. If you're casting out the devil, we don't need you to preach while you're casting the devil out. Just cast the devil out. Just have the power to cast it out. You shouldn't have to hold your ear. And squall to get the devil to come out. <laughs> come out in the night. We don't. And most times the devil likes entertainment. So don't do that. Don't do that. Most times I don't speak in tongues real heavy until I know the Lord releases me to to intercede for that individual that's praying for the person or under my breath. A lot of loud tongues isn't needed in deliverance because that something about loud tongues during deliverance, it really makes the devil even the more matter and makes him cut up. It just makes the devil extra. And you want to know why it is because he doesn't understand what you're saying. You want to make the devil mad, start speaking in tongues. He gets mad. Now, ain't nothing wrong with the devil being mad, but it's going to slow down your deliverance process because you need the person that you're praying for to cooperate in the deliverance as much as possible. OK, as much as you have the power to get someone delivered, it's even more powerful when the person wants the deliverance and is cognizant to receive and, and actually identify with the spirit of that deliverance. OK. Next, use the word of God to assault the enemy. All of these notes that I'm reading to you are coming out of our um, manual, the Sons of Iskar School of the Prophets. Uh, many of you, there's still people coming inside the Apostolic Renaissance Network. If you want to become a covenant partner for 50 or just come in just to receive this teaching that we're bringing to you. Um, if you want to become a part of the network to receive the different teachings and the books and the classes that will be knocked half price for you. Many of it will be free. You can come in at 25 or come at the covenant level uh, at 50. Uh, there are people here who have pastors. There are pastors inside this network. So we just bless God for God opened that up. But I just wanted to make you uh, make that you aware of that right there. OK, because this is our Bible study service. We're not doing it on the conference call tonight. So if you want to sow a seed, I would encourage you to sow. You know, if this is anointing that's blessing you, sow on a good ground. I was somewhere today dealing with some hard things. And while I was in the midst of it, walked into a saint, they blessed me, hadn't seen them in, in a couple months and put that seed in my hand and said, I'm sowing this. This is my redemption seed. And God is automatically going to begin to do some things. So that's something I don't play with. I don't play with folk money. I don't play with sowing because we've seen God do a lot of things through the release of seed. But even when people didn't have seed, y'all. When you don't have it, don't feel bad. You ain't got it. But your service, your prayers, they go a long way. Just your support on PowerScope goes a long way. So I just had to say that we appreciate every covenant partner, every intercessor, every son, every daughter, everybody. Okay. Use the word of God to assault the enemy. Catch phrases. Don't fly here. Devil, I'm going to bust your head to the white meat. Come on. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. One guy used to say it all the time. Chosen, do you send the demon somewhere once it is cast out? Yes. But I will say this. You have to know. You have to know. You got to know. And the Holy Spirit, the biggest, your biggest help in deliverance ministry, for real, is not going to be the books you read. It won't be even the revelations God gives you in deliverance. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Your biggest Holy Ghost enforcer, Holy Ghost buster, is going to be the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit will tell you where this spirit emanated from and whether you need to send it back there or send it to another place of a higher degree of judgment. And I'll give that example a little bit later. OK, use the word of God, the blood of Yeshua. Catchphrases don't fly here. 
They will get your lying tail out. No. Hit me with your best shot, Satan, because I, 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 I'm too blessed to be stressed. Stop it. So, uh, again, like I said, a million tongues in deliverance ministry, when you're taking someone through it, is dangerous. Yes. Just be sober as possible. Okay? One major person should be addressing the spirit, or it can add confusion. That's right. That's why when I'm in a deliverance service or I'm handling the deliverance, I tell the people, you know, pray, but pray kind of under your breath. Pray and focus in on that target while you pray. Okay. Don't be louder than me praying because that creates a distraction and the enemy will use any distraction he can to stop the deliverance. And the person fall out and you think, the, you know, the demon gone. No, the demon just went to the feet. It went to the basement. It went from the attic to the basement. Then you get the person back up. The demon has shifted somewhere in the living room behind the kitchen counter. I'm serious. There are departments in your body where the devil will hide in. Is it okay to pray in and I head sometimes, sometimes pray in my head. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I do that a lot. But you got to be careful of. People that's falling out under deliverance because I'm about to hit something right here about that throwing up. Okay, about that vomiting because that can be dangerous. And I'm going to yes. give you an example. Yes, sir. Um, because if psych nurse was on, if Prophet Brandon Perkins was on, he could tell you something about that. What? What, baby? No, nothing. I was just waiting for you to turn it. Oh, we don't want to see that spirit. We want that demon to go. <laughs> you just got the teaching on that. No. We don't want that spirit. This ain't no such thing. Yes, it's God's creation, but all dogs go to heaven. So this this is a different. So class. then that you just basically bear witness. I wonder what when people ask you to pray, Tini got put that back up. I, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but again, one person should be addressing the spirit. We don't need fifty five people laying hands on someone with a demon. We don't need everyone coming up praying for the person with the demon. If they got a demon because they transfer. Have you heard of the demon named Azazel? Mm -hmm. If you don't go rent the movie Fallen with Denzel Washington. Yes. Okay. Unless the Holy Spirit leads you to ask for a name. Don't ask. Exactly. Because demons lie. All the time. I remember there was a demon that asked. Uh. <laughs> Bishop Bloomer asked the demon, what's his name? And the demon got small with him, said, my name is today. He said, oh, well, today you finna come out today. <laughs> they will lie to you. OK. Yes, they will. And I want to say this. That's the Hold purpose. On. That is the very reason why your number one thing to do in deliverance is to pray. Yeah, Tina, that's that's. That's yeah. a competition spirit. And it is because basically okay. we just said earlier that you have to rely totally on the Holy Spirit when you're dealing with deliverance. Number one, you can't perform deliverance ministry being macho, meaning I'm the HBIC and I'm going <laughs> to cast this devil out. No, I'm going to tell you something. Demons are not afraid of you. Okay. But they respect highly the word, though they do a lot of things to disrespect the word and to, Sorry. you know, put down the word. They respect the anointing. And one thing about it, the anointing does not belong to you. So when you're dealing with demonic activities, when you're dealing with spirits, when you or when you're dealing with a demonized person, especially then. You know, you have to rely completely, completely, 100% on the Holy Spirit to tell you everything. There was one particular guy, if he's watching, <laughs> who are you laughing? I'm, no, oh. I want you to finish your example. Okay. I didn't mean, cut, I don't no. want to block anybody, but y'all, this is a very serious oh, teaching. And you better be glad. If I it's a see dumb it. question, I'm just going to tell you. I'm either going to answer your dumb question. What was the question? It, no, it's just people just be saying stuff to Tina. No, people be saying stuff to be saying, and we experience interruptions when we teach on deliverance. Exactly. Okay, demons will right. come out. I'm gonna tell and you. And I laughed because we was on a call for um, the gathering of the eagles. I missed it too. They better be glad I did. No, you didn't. 
We was I on there, and I think actually, no, she talking about the okay, yeah. and Tayana was on there. Uh, maybe you know Tayana Copeland, proudest Tayana Copeland. Mm-hmm. And a man got on. <laughs> oh my man god! Got on oh there, my god! Y'all, and he said, um, "Help me! Help me! A demon's coming out of my eye!" And we had to hurry up and get him off the. Yes. I mean, he was a neo-Nazi and cussing folk out and saying all kinds. Of, so you're going to get interruptions. Yes. During deliverance ministry. Yeah. You're going to get interruptions. So, um, you guys, let's. We're having fun <laughs> because we have to relate. Yes. But we do want to take it seriously. That's right. You know, that's right. People saying, I wonder why Jesus won't come back and things like that. Um, should you stir up a demon when you're alone if there's no one to help you? Uh, no. And if I and if I add something to that, don't stir up anything you're not going to cast out. Exactly. Because, Lord, we was in a meeting and the person said, come on. Think about your most hardest memories. Go back there. Go back to that rape. Go back to that abuse. Go back to that molestation. Go back to when they they, they try to murder you. And let that surface in your soul. And God going to touch it right now. And all these ladies started screaming. And nobody's spirit got dealt with. They was just screaming all over the place. One girl was twerking. We was there. No, no, no. I'm talking about that one when we was in Florida. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, yes, yes, yes. Don't call, don't call up nothing. You can't cast out. Especially if you're by yourself. Okay? I'm serious. If you're not equipped to handle it by yourself, we're at that point where we've done enough deliverance ministry underneath our belt. It don't matter where we are. Sure don't. Okay? The supermarket, the bank. Uh, shoot, I was at Chick-fil-A casting out the devil in the drive-thru. Yes, Folk was Lord. honking saying, look, I want my spicy sandwich. Can you move out the way? Folk was yeah. purging in. Y'all don't hear me. That's right. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something. Throwing up and Apostle's going to get True to that. story. He's, you know, throwing up is not always going to be the yep, spirit's that's where we exit next. out. Wow. I'm going to tell you that right now. When I was, I'll tell you this real quick, and we're going to that because I really want to tap that. Um, Labor Day weekend was it? Was it Labor Day Memorial? Was it the? I think it was Memorial, and uh, it had to be Memorial Day. And you know, of course, me and a couple of intercessors were going looking for certain things because I wanted to barbecue. Okay, so I said, "Well, dog, I think they out of the slaw." Oh my God, I found it! So I grabbed all this slaw because I had a lot of people that I wanted to come over. You know. And I'm going there for a reason. That's, so the woman yeah. got mad yeah, it was because there was no more slaw left. And she came up to me. She saw all my slaw in the basket. And she said, there's no more slaw left. Oh, my God. And I said, well, baby, don't cry. I got about 10 packs here. Take two or three of mine. I, I mean, you know, whatever. You know, I know I got a lot of people coming, but somebody bound to just not get slaw. And it's not that. And all of a sudden, you could smell, you could smell this alcohol. It wasn't just on her breath. It was coming out of her. Mm-mm-mm. And in the middle of the day, honey. Yes. Broad daylight. <laughs> afternoon, that spirit tried me up in super low. And that spirit said, I just know you anointed. I just... Oh, she just threw her whole body on me. Yep. I knew nothing about this woman. At the Piggly Wiggly, y'all. One of the intercessors, her favorite word was the stuck face. She had the stuck face, meaning she said, and she was just looking like, what is really going on with this woman? All I know was the Holy Spirit rose up in me so bad. We were casting the devil out of that woman in the middle of of the aisle. I can tell you what aisle we was on. Wherever all the barbecue sauce and the ketchup and the condiments and stuff. That's the aisle we was on in that store. And we were casting the devil out of the aisle. And this man was grabbing the barbecue sauce. And I was watching my surroundings because I did not want the people to think I was beating the woman up. So this man was knocking barbecue sauce off of the shelves. He said, man, what you got? I want some of that too. And I was thinking like, Lord, he better be talking about this prayer because I'm not giving another bag of slaw way out of my basket <laughs> but um 
he was talking about prayer. Yeah. And he wanted prayer. And before I knew it, there were people who were watching. Some people watched. Some people were walking by saying, hey, man, get it. You better get that devil. You know, or whatever. It's people were just saying, you know, some people was like, wow. Let me tell you something. There are people who really want God. And you are going to be the only God that they'll see. Not That's calling right. you a God, but they'll only see God in you. Yes. We were at... Um the Inner Harbor. Well, I was at the Inner Harbor wow. years ago. And they had an ordination service. I ain't scared. I'm going to tell this. Uh -oh. It was at an ordination service. <clears throat> and the same prophet that had ordained all these people, laid hands on all these people, put the collar, turpat collar on all these people. They was like, we want to go downtown to the gallery. We want to eat and da-da-da-da. And we went down there. This guy had a locker. Very sharp prophet. Mm -hmm. But just because your gifts work doesn't mean that your heart does. Oh, Lord Jesus. And went downtown. This guy had a locker, changed into all his little cl tight clothes, went to McDonald's inside the little mall place. I was like, where did, where did Prophet go? Went, changed his clothes. We're like, why does he look so, mm -hmm. his clothes so tight? His clothes just so tight. That's right. I started from Lexi. Close to tight. Yeah, close to tight. Just so tight. So tight on you. Just so tight. Just so tight. And I'm like, what's going on? You changed from your robe, your black mm -hmm. Roman Catholic mm -hmm. cassock to all of this skin tight paint on jean stuff. And you're a dude. Okay. He oh, went to McDonald's, no, you guys. You he just went to ordaining people. Went to McDonald's. Got him a sweet tea. Drank the sweet tea. Yeah. Emptied out the sweet tea and started going around the Galleria getting numbers from different guys. True story. And took different one of these guys into the bathroom and began to have. Now, we're talking about deliverance, so this is for adults. Okay? I hope they and know had the men, watching. he was giving Caleb, them jobs Caleb, in the bathroom. Put your earphones in, son. And was putting. It, all I can say is he wasn't emptying out Capri Sun back into his sweet tea cup. Whatever he was putting in the sweet tea cup wasn't sweet. Sad. Okay? And Sad. I didn't know it. So I started to go into the bathroom and one of the prize women said, no, 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 no. I said, what's going on? He said, somebody's in the bathroom. I said, what? I look, I have to go. And he went, as yeah. soon as he said, no, watch this. When he walked in there, the guy ran out yeah. that was with the prophet. When he came in there, the prophet was getting up off his knees at the urinal. So, do you think this man washed his hands? That's disgusting. Do you think this man took care of anything? No. No. Went on over. It was a group of us. Went on over and just started buying food and eating it. Now, you know that is... Oh, that's disgusting. That's a spirit. Yes, That is. is a perverse spirit. Yes. And the more gifted you are, the more you have to ward off spirits like that. That's right. Because perversion comes after prophets more than any Anything. other office. Yeah. Because God knows if I, the devil knows that if I can shut down the mouthpiece of God, I can shut down the, the momentum and the history and the future of the church because it's locked up in a prophet's mouth. Yeah. The devil, creation, angels, nothing in all creation knows what God is about to do until he tells a prophet. Did you know that? Come on. That's how awesome you are as a gift to the body. That's right. Okay? But we went to eat, and you're just eating and da-da-da-da-da, prophesying, and then we yes. left there. And as we were walking, the Holy Ghost just started welling up in me. It felt like a million hammers on the inside of me just beating their way out. And when we got to a certain place in the Galleria off the water with the boats, people were walking by. I mean, downtown Baltimore is very crowded. And we're standing there. And he said, I perceive the Lord has something for me from you, you know, and you don't have to be scared. You know, I'll take whatever rebuke you got. I said, good. I went in. Mm -hmm. Everyone around looked around like somebody was getting shot. This guy was laying on the brick. We got cobblestone in Baltimore. Oh, that old stone that yeah. they used to travel on with the horses and stuff. And you could hear. He was laying on that. With people walking past. 
crying his eyeballs out. God was calling out when this boy was in the hospital, had tubes in his body. This boy had been shot past. This boy had a, he had a history that the church couldn't deal with. Come on. So they slapped the collar on him because he had a gift, but they couldn't take care of his history. They couldn't take care of his past. Couldn't get him free. Deliverance. Do you know many, oh God, so many people in the church would lose their jobs if they got delivered. Because there's a demon enabling them, hey, you're a singer, sing. You on the organ, be the organist. You're, you're, the, you're the choir leader. Come on, you're the choir director. Come on, you're the prophet of the house. You're the national evangelist. But you know you got stuff that, the, that ain't under the blood. And as soon as deliverance, true deliverance come your way, we may lose you. So what does the bishop or the pastor do that wants to keep that in control? They keep them in their position That's right. and they keep them in their position because of their gifts that make money. It's just like Acts chapter 16 It's divination. They were using the girl to make money. And Paul, after a while, you know, she was declaring something that was true, but from not, but it wasn't the spirit of truth declaring it. And you got to be careful when someone is declaring something that's true, but it's not from the spirit of truth. These men will show you the way of salvation. I that's can imagine right. Paul trying to minister to somebody. Here she come. These men going to minister the truth of salvation. Girl, he just turned around and said, shut up and come out of her. It's something, if you talk to people and their spirit feel nice, nasty to you, yes. like you hear that voice and you like, mm -mm, that's a demon. If you hear me, you like something about this. Now, if you ain't got no discernment, then you ain't got no right to be going, because mm -mm, you need deliverance your own self. That's right. Because there's so many people that have not been opened up to the true raw power of God. They'll call the devil God and God the devil. That's right. Uh, Y'all really got me preaching. We supposed to be talking about purging. Okay. Let's get to that. Just because Jesus. they vomit doesn't mean the demon was cast out. Short testimony. We was at a cookout, same atmosphere, same friends, all of that. And the man that I was ministering to that was doing all the sweet teacup stuff was ministering to a woman. He started pushing her and she started pushing him back. And he was challenging her. Come on, I want that spirit to manifest out of you. Yeah. So she started throwing up in the middle of everybody, in the middle of the cookout. And we was like, whoa. Now someone got healed of AIDS at the same cookout. Yeah. And this little prophet was everywhere because he was telling me all kind of stuff. Trying to get numbers that day. Yep. But, you know, she started throwing up. Messy. And they opened up the door and a wind blew in. And it was just as silent. And all I could hear, somebody in the corner said, uh-oh, oh no, uh-oh. And this woman just really started throwing up. Yeah. So we really had to do extra warfare. Just because they purge out of their mouth does not mean the demon was cast <laughs> out, y'all. The spirit of the Holy Spirit has to give you the discerning spirit so you know what the spirit is doing. That is a spirit that is called mm. purging. Come on. They practice this over in China. They throw up to summon spirits to enter into their mouths. Hello. There's so many cartoons on Cartoon Network where the demon comes in through the nose, the eyes, or the ears, but most times demons come in through the mouth gate. Mm -hmm. What you last ate. Oh God. Oh Who you last my ate. Oh God. Can I say this? Go ahead. Come on. And let me tell you something else. Have you all noticed, and I don't care who watching this, you know that, right? Okay. Good. You what you last said. Do you notice a lot of uh, homosexuals? I'm not talking about just men. I'm talking about men and women, even children. Uh, those who deal with uh, a homosexual spirit, they are extremely strong. Um, if you see them, I don't care how feminine a man can be. Uh, you make him mad. Honey, you done came up against an incredible hope. You're going to see the rat. You're going to need some silver bullets to take that one out. I'm going to tell you that right now. Here in Memphis, I know it's everywhere, but I can only speak for Memphis, Tennessee. There were two guys that got the fight. And before the fight, it was like, uh-uh, you ain't going to tell me. And I was like, oh, Lord, we're going to see a cat fight. And when they started jacking, you thought it was Creed. Do you hear me? <laughs> I was looking like, oh, Lord, yeah. somebody called 911. They finna kill each other, Jesus. You Feeling know? fine now. now You'd have thought it was rocking. Let me tell you what the Lord just downloaded in my spirit about that. The reason why, because of what you taught, God just confirmed something. Now, the Lord just confirmed. You don't 
you can okay you can um be demonized uh through the eye gate through the mouth gate the nose gate ear gate and all of that okay right. because these are entryways to your soul but there are two other entrances oh god I have to say it. I'm sorry. There are two other entrances <laughs> that he's he put the whole camera on me, Lord. <laughs> this is a class for adults. No, this, this is not a, for the feeble this is a at class This, whoever, for this is a class for whoever dared to turn this periscope on. Because yeah. we got some seven-year-olds. Can I just say it? Come on. Now, there's some seven-year-olds that I know that God had to hold my belt back because they wasn't my child. But some seven-year-olds who know how to stick a nail in their mouth because they practicing oral sex. So I ain't trying to hear that, okay? So if you got the guts to watch it, then you need to hear this. But there are two other entrances to your body that the enemy will give you supernatural strength. Now, And the reason being is because there is blood mixed in. Okay, blood covenants. This is big That's in deliverance is. ministry. Any type of sin, if you notice, any type of major sin deals with a blood covenant. How do you deal with the ones that come when you are asleep? <laughs> we'll deal with that. Incubus, succubus. That. Hopefully we can yes. get into that. Okay. Because that's kind of vast. If not, so I'll tell, tell you what. Spirit. We have to do this until it's done. Whoever cat eye is, write that question in. Oh, you write know who cat eye is. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Y'all, the names throw me off. I know who y'all, <laughs> but when I get on here, it's like, cat eye. <laughs> she careful. is not gonna say that. That's Andrea. Andrea scared. Andrea, yeah. Okay. Help, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Y'all, just okay. being real. Okay. Yes. All right. Two things. I want to address the ancient history of why uh, <laughs> homosexual sex brought about the worship of actually the dead. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going back. I want to deal with. Uh, real quickly, um, what you was just talking about, um, what we were just talking about, someone bring it back up. You talked about the children. Yeah, that got a little bit more experience than. Right. But it dealt with uh, that Lord. spirit. If you guys remember what we was just talking about, because we're on a, uh, a, a roll. A lot of questions that I had no answers right. to. Right. Blood to covenants. Yes. Thank you. Any type of major sin deals with blood or the release of blood or DNA in some form. Okay. Yes. Um, when you cut yourself, people that are cutters. Yes. Blood is used when there is an incubus succubus spirit on you or you're in uh, illicit sexual immoral relations with anyone. There's release of uh, fluid or DNA. Okay. Um, also. When you are someone that is drunk, that alcohol goes into the bloodstream, okay? When someone smokes, that drug, that potion, that elixir, that's all. That's the Old Testament word for it, goes into the bloodstream. When someone is delivered, got to ask it one more time. I keep missing when it. Someone, basically, she wants to know if when someone is delivered, uh, don't, don't the peace of God come in after they're yes. delivered? Yes, the peace of God comes in the whole room. It washes the whole room. And many times when we get a person to that point of deliverance where everything's been bound, everything's been loosed, okay? The word for loose, and I don't want to mess this up, but the word for loose is the word luau mm. or luo. And it means to uh, sever or to uh, lacerate. So when you lose someone, oh, wow. you know, we know what bind means, but when you lose someone, you are literally cutting the head off of what they're going through or you're mm -hmm. cutting them away from what they've been going through. That's really helping me. I love my help me. Amen. Okay. Um, but anal <laughs> sex, sex in the rear end, sex not made for procreation. Okay. When they, they believe the prophets of Baal and Asherah or Jezebel and Ahab yeah. took on the Babylonian practice of sodomy, which actually was a worship practice. That's right. When you look in the ancient archaeolo archaeological records, it would tell you of their religion. And they believe that the mixing of human feces yes. with sperm and they will mix it up sometimes in bowls after they had whatever that's true or while they were doing it they believed that it brought about the spirit of a dead person 
it wasn't because this feel good. It was because we wanted to practice necromancy. We need to talk to the dead and we don't have a crystal ball. Anal sex. Oral sex came from a practice where people began to practice oral sex on horses. That's right. Yep. <laughs> all actually all these illicit stuff really came from the fallen angels. They taught witchcraft. They I taught how to do makeup. They taught a lot yeah. of things. She was pulling on my legs. I woke up and started being the blood. That's uh Lilith. That's the spirit of Lilith, the night hag. We're gonna deal with that. Yes. We are gonna get into that. Most of what we're kind of going over tonight is in the books how to wage warfare yes. and when um Sons of Iskar, School of the Prophets, and also um the dethrone the ancient powers. And I didn't bust out dethrone the ancient powers because we got slow walk that. Because some may not be ready to digest all of that. Exactly. Okay. Um, next, while you're praying, call for backup. Don't be afraid to call the angel of the Lord to assist you. So that when the demon's coming out of the person, it doesn't shred the person or rip the person. We've seen people thrown in deliverance ministry. People yes. that we've known for years. Yeah. Go to a service and deliverance going forth. Yeah. It looked like the person turned to a rhinoceros. Yeah. I mean, just threw themselves to the ground. Like, oh my, who is this? Where was that spirit at? That's right. You know? So. People who served with us had yes. demons. We had to cast it out right in our living room. One thing one of my uh, African spiritual fathers taught me was neutralizing warfare. That's right. Sometimes you have to bring the atmosphere. Uh, two words, neutralize and cauterize. Yes. I want you to remember those two words. Uh, because when I come back tomorrow for our noon scope, we're going to continue this. Cauterize and neutralize. Y'all knew what neutralizer does. Honey, you're a cosmetologist. What does a neutralizer yes. do? It stops the uh, process. Mmm. Process of what? If you okay, case in point, you get in the relaxer, not a perm. You get in the relaxer. If you get a relaxer, um, there is a shampoo when you rinse when you rinse the relaxer out, and it's called a neutralizer. And the purpose of the neutralizer is it is stopping the purpose of the relaxer. So when so you're... that means that if the relaxer is in, you know your hair nap is sheep hair. Okay, <laughs> and it's straightening it out. You don't want the relaxer to keep working because it's going to keep working as long as it's in your scalp. So the neutralizer relaxer comes in and it stops the actions of the relaxer. So if you are neutralizing warfare, you're walking into an atmosphere and your very presence by itself, not your mouth, but your very presence should neutralize an atmosphere, meaning Everything should stop. Come on. So you should be walking into a cussing den and people start cussing. Oh, excuse me. I ain't mean that. I'm sorry. My bad. I There's a part of a class I taught in the School of Supernatural, and that's coming up. This month, I have to announce the Throne of Ancient Powers, the School of Intercession, and uh, the School of Supernatural will be going on uh, every week this month. Yes. Okay. So we're going to let you know Amen. it's going to start right. on next week. Okay. And also we talked about neutralizing. Cauterize means burn to oblivion. That's it. That's a burn you can't put no cream on. Okay. You need that to stop the effect of spirits that have a recurring effect. One of those spirits is the, uh, is, uh, yes, God, the non-headed hydra. <laughs> These represent spirits that recur in your life, recurring cycles, unending cycles. You have to cauterize the effect of the enemy. And y'all, I know this sounds, people use this as uh, words to make people, you know, ooh, they said a big word. No. Mm -hmm. If you use this stuff and use it in warfare and know what you're talking about, I can guarantee you, you're going to see a result. Okay? That's right. And the reason why we throw in humor and we're a little giddy, number one, because God has given us the joy of the Lord, number one. Number two, the ministry we do is so serious. If we stayed in our office, 100%, many of you couldn't handle us. No. And I'm just being real with you. And because we be, we be we talking. Be loopy. Yeah. We be talking Spanglish to people that only know Google Gaga. And that's not a put down to anybody. I'm just telling you how deep off into this it can really be. You got to be prepared. We didn't get here overnight. No. 
No. You can pay me to be around the person that was demonized at one point. And I don't like scary stuff. And I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> let me let me say okay. this. Can I can I say this? Because see, I hate with a passion people who have a deliverance ministry. Yeah, I put them quotations real hard. People Ooh. who have a deliverance ministry and they have not suffered nothing for that anointing. Look, my ex-husband, I was married in my first marriage and I had a first marriage. I'm gonna I was married I? for 12 years. 12 years. And for those 12 years, I was constantly coming and uh, combating Against the spirit of death over and over and over. I have faced death. I cannot tell you how many times. Some of the times I've actually died and came back. I died on the abortion table. Y'all hear me? I suffered for this. Now, some I say, now, woman, God, you were supposed to be saved, blah, blah, blah. No, I was forced to having an abortion because I was underage. I'll leave that testimony where it is. But underage, I was forced to have an abortion. Not once, twice. Jesus. And one of those times, I actually passed on the table. And the Lord brought me back. Okay? And I thought I was asleep. So that's a whole nother story when we talk about life and death and stuff like that. That's a whole nother story yes. because you don't even know you're gone. That's just how quick it is. However, um... The other thing is through that marriage. Now, when I finally got married, after those incidents, I had gotten married at a very, very young age. And I was fighting demons. Now, I'm talking about knocking on my window. I'm talking about levitation. I'm talking about pulling my hair out of my head. I'm talking about waking up with scratches on my body and things like that. And um, somebody asked me a crazy question one time. They thought that I was, um, what is it? What they call it? Uh, not quarantine. I forgot what they call it. But yeah, they they thought that um, you know that the enemy was marking crosses on me, and I was like, "No, nah, ain't that serious?" And it didn't get that serious. <laughs> but there had been times where demons would jump in my bed and would choke me with my own covers while I was wide awake, and my ex husband would walk in the room and he would think that I was just wrestling in the bed by myself and things like that. I'm telling you. So I paid the price to walk up to a nutcase in a crazy house in a straight jacket and cast the devil out of him. I paid that price for that. We have lost children. I have a total. I'm supposed to, let me say it this way. I'm supposed to have a total of six children. Four of my children are deceased and they're gone to be with the Lord. Okay, there we go. We got to cut this short. Four of my children are gone on to be with the Lord. Okay. I have paid the price that the Lord has allotted and allowed me to pay. When you pay those kind of prices, see, somebody could have gone through the same exact things and even worse. You can grab it real quick because okay. I don't know what it is. Okay. Right there. All right. We're, he's getting the uh, charger because we really want to keep this going. Some of you probably have paid, you know, a price way worse than I have, you know, or anything like that. So, and that's fine, you know, and you may be anointed to evangelize. I'm sorry. My bad. You may be anointed to evangelize. You may be anointed um to just preach the gospel or whatever you know because some people they pay a, a certain amount of a price for a certain type of an anointing but in this case this is what bothers me you have people who they're trying to be a wonder i like to call them personally the seven sons of siva they jumped on me at night and tried to smother me see i, I know what you're talking about men of god i uh, lord let me i'm charging wait a minute sorry okay Oh, then there should be light. There we go. Put this on speed dial too. Okay. All right. He said we got to put this on speed dial. Some stuff in there. Okay. All right. So we waiting on the pastor to get back. So I'm saying all of that to say this to you. You don't just jump in any area of ministry and you have not first gone through boot camp. That's why I can't get with the people with the zeal. You know, and I understand the zeal. I had a zeal. You know, when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit, this piece of hair keep jumping up like I got a cow lick or something. Y'all pray for me. Pray for the cow lick has got a demon. But you know what? 
I understand the people with the zeal because, you know, as soon as, as you get saved, the people want to, um, uh oh, sorry, you guys. You know, they want, yeah, you hold this because I'm not good at it. I'm so not good. They said stop. <laughs> but, you know, the people, you know, when they get that zeal, they, they want to go hard for Tell God. them, Melinda. Tell them, Melinda. This ain't zeal for the weak and no heart. Knowledge. We done seen some stuff. We done yes. been attacked. Alonda, let me tell y'all something. That uh, naturally beautiful girl that keep coming and that woman has lived with us for a total. I know if you count with me and with the both of us since we've been married. This girl has lived with us a total. I know about seven years. She knows. Okay. This girl has come into my bedroom and my bed was shaking. I appreciate how she walked out of my bedroom and left me. You know. You know. <laughs> well, we got to I got to say this. Okay. 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 Um, okay because okay. this is starting to. Try to freeze. If it freezes, I'm let you all know. We're getting right back on to finish up. Should it freeze? But well, come on, bind the freezing devil. Come on, bind yes. boys and boys. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, but let me make my point very quick. But um, a person with zeal, it's like they lose patience. They want it so fast. Oh, I want to cast out devils. I want to pastor. I'm getting my cards made. I'm ready and I'm ready to go. And they get mad over the little smallest things because. They don't understand. They lack the knowledge. They do not know how to be still. They babies. You know how many times you got to tell a one-year-old or two-year-old to sit down. Sit down somewhere. Stop it. Get off of that. You know, if I fussed at Anthony. Now, Anthony's not a toddler or anything like that. But he's at the um, at the pace of a, of a two-year-old. And I'm always, stop biting your brother, Anthony. Anthony, get off of the dresser, Anthony. Don't crawl up on that. Sit down, Anthony. Be quiet, Anthony. Stop. Stop, Anthony, and that's what we're doing to a lot of body, a lot of people in the body of Christ with no zeal. I mean, with zeal because they want to move, they want to go, but they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the anointing, they have not sat long enough for the anointing. Yeah. And what that means, well, how long do I have to sit long enough for you to get it? That's it. That's it. If it take you three weeks to get it and you got it, then it's time for you to work. But yeah. for some of you, it take three years. You got to get it. You got to get the anointing. You got to get a relationship with the Lord. You got to get a love life with God. Because if you don't, who you going to call on to help you? Because after that, then I'm going to be calling you one of the seven sons of Seba. Well, those demons will tell you, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I ain't got no ID on you. I don't know you. So I got legal right to rip you to shreds. <laughs> And jumping in on that, our next point is discerning of spirit. 30 is years, woman key. of God. No praise breaks in deliverance until the end. We done been there and I've been in delivering someone and they started singing a song in the middle of it. And I told them, stop. Yes. It was like, well, I just feel the anointing. We'll feel it after we finish praying. The demon's not out yet. Why are you singing? That's it. I just feel like worshiping. There's not the time to worship. <laughs> You don't worship during spiritual warfare. Does it make sense? No, you fight. Does it make sense? Okay. Not when you are fighting in the spirit. Worship is a separate time. We're in the outer court. We're not behind the veil yet. When you're doing spiritual warfare, it's in the outer court. Yes. Okay. All right. Someone says no praise breaks in the Bible. <laughs> don't ask David well, that. There's one. Don't say, react. One? Respond. If you start deliverance, finish it. We went over that. Words have meaning. Don't plead or beg for anything. Now, plead means to stand in the stead of. If you know that you're not standing in the place where you need to be, then you can plead the blood. Now, that's a warfare teaching really deeper for another day. Okay? Sometimes it's the person. Everything isn't the devil. We were casting the spirit off of a young girl. And someone asked the name, and she said, Real Scatterman. And we said, Okay, yeah. She almost got a whooping that day she for flogging no, and pretending, did. acting like it was a demon. True story. And that was during a season where we was casting out demons like week like, to week oh to week. Oh my God. I was tired. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Okay. No music. And let your glory fill this place. Or we play real dramatic music during deliverance time. Demons are musical. Yes. Because their father was musical. Remember the deliverance, I ain't gonna call them out, but a little deliverance service. 
And the person started dancing to the music in the middle of just moving to the music. And I don't want to say right here with me, but was dancing to the music in the middle of don't do that. <laughs> the service. And I'm like, if somebody don't get this girl, I'm going to jump up and grab her forehead. And it's coming. Listen, don't come after a demon. You ain't got no confidence in the God. You That's serve. right. Because when you come after spirit, it got to know you coming. That's it. Okay. In mm. the spirit, not in the flesh. All right. Mm. Sometimes deliverance isn't straightway or instantaneous. Be ready to work. It don't always happen right then. Up oh, the demon out. Time to go get some donuts. No, you got to work. Okay. Be physically fit. Here's some tips. Give Ooh. you some deliverance tips. Tips. Be physically fit. That's why I'm hitting that gym. I'm sorry, but you cannot, not saying you can't work deliverance because deliverance is spiritual. But if you find, Father, whoo, in the name. You can't do it. Whoo, give me some. Whoo, that will become an attack on you. Yeah. And a lot of times when you are overweight, a spirit that attacks people in the spirit realm that are overweight is a spirit of heaviness. <laughs> so sit down, can't <laughs> You talking, Give a woman of God, chair. but I was in the middle of that deliverance service and the person sat down and said, come to me. Come on up. Really? Ho, oh, there it is. Ho, oh, there it ain't. Yo. Next. Um, Yo. Be sober. Be vigilant. Yes. In diet. Okay? That's right. You cannot effectively do deliverance and you okay. just had three deep dish hand tossed Mexican pizzas. Y'all know how bad I want to make my well, you're own be the one purging. popcorn right now. Yo, we really need our own television yes. show. Y'all yes. pray about us getting a television show, okay? Cause a reality show. We're going to make you laugh well, we and we're going to make you go up in the spirit, okay? I got it all at the same time. Bring the person, this is most important, bring them to a point of repentance. Bring them to a point where they broke it's a bro it's a breaking that's happened in deliverance. You can see the difference in the countenance. That's you can right. see the difference in the atmosphere mm -hmm. when the devil has been bound and cast out. That's right. Pay attention to the eyes. Yes. All, all of this. When they're dark, let me tell you something. You seen people and you like, oh y'all, that I'm sorry, ma'am. You call a ma'am, and every time they talk to you, yes, ma'am, no ma'am. And then y'all get to talking too good and you find out that the lady you've been saying yes ma'am and no ma'am to was only 28 years old. It's a religious spirit. And I'm sure there's a, another uh, root to that. There's a root, you know, spirit to that, uh, which will probably be rejection yes. or something like that. Because a lot of people, if you get what I mean, uh, what I'm saying is they look older um, than what they are yes. um, because religion does that. It ages you. So you see a lot of women and they're dark all through <laughs> here. All you know that they're really dark. Jesus. Um their hair starts to, you know, get kind of poor looking and and I'm not joking like real talk. This is an effect. That's what happens the because the enemy is wearing them Set out. Camp. They're praying all the time, but their prayers are vain and they're repetitious. Young so grandmothers. They're, yes. Is, oh, my God. They're young and they're repetitious and they're wearing themselves out because they lack power. Okay. Here's something. Okay. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. Don't lay hands unless God says so, number one. Because laying hands, now these are the little deliverance tips, and then I'm going to say this prayer, and we're going to talk about getting an anointing on tomorrow, the prerequisites of getting an anointing, okay? The ingredients inside of a holy anointing oil yes. on your life, okay? Um, don't lay hands unless the Lord leads you to. I'm going to have to hit that tomorrow. Where did it come Probably from? Accurate. Is it a cliche? Uh, I got to handle that tomorrow, Prophet. You got to come back for noon. Yes. Okay. Y'all come back for tomorrow's class, Pyroscope, we'll at be noon. right here. Okay. Talking about having an authentic anointing oil. Okay. <sighs> you got to be careful laying hands because laying hands, people don't teach this. Laying hands is an exchange. So not only are you releasing the virtue of God in a person, 
but your lifeline and your rope and the anointing has to be long enough that doesn't pull something in you that ain't delivered out. Or you transfer something in you into the person and they transfer something back into you. I have to have enough anointing to lay hands on my wife or lay my wife, lay hands on her to transfer, <laughs> stop it, <laughs> to transfer something <laughs> to the point that it breaks off of her. But when it does, I've picked up the activity of that spirit's uh, weaponry and I hold it captive in the anointing. And what happens is I have to, I'm giving you tips, giving you secrets of deliverance ministers. You have to go home and it's, it's primary, really primary that you bathe. Yes. Okay. After you come through that, because it spiritually, y'all don't believe this, but it does. It cuts off the scent of demons looking for you That's because right. the person don't have it no more. Now, you can be full of stuff and transfer your own sins and stuff on somebody. That's what they did in the Old Testament to the scapegoat, okay? But when you lay hands on someone and you're transmitting the anointing to break and destroy the yoke, what happens is they go, that used to happen to me as well, they go and they lay down. Yes. You know, they're delivered. They ain't got nothing to worry about. But you taking back home the residue, what they went through and through repentance and prayer and what's called um, uh, warfare, uh, prophetic warfare, yes. prophetic watch care. You're getting rid of your decreeing and you keep decreeing over the life. What God is saying after the meeting, this is the homework for prophets. You don't just prophesy. You go home and you do the homework. You continue to pray that the word of the Lord be made manifest in the person's life. And you go home and as you bathe and as you pray, you're discarding the residue of what you exactly. broke off of that person. Now let me Because if see. not, you're going to be attacked. So you got to be careful. And I'm just skipping into this so we can okay. get to this prayer. Okay, let me, um, let me throw this in while he's getting to that prayer. Bathing. No, no, no. Listen, little oh. that's what I'm saying. Okay. I want you to jump on bathing. I'm just throwing okay. this. Okay. Um, no eating during deliverance as much as possible. Drink oh, water if you got to drink anything. Okay? That's it. Go home. Don't linger around. Take a hot bath. Shower. Don't receive a lot of gifts. This goes with the, 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 the deliverance thing. And rest. That's a part of worship. That's a part of your recovery of the temple. Okay? It's got to... Rest has to hit your tabernacle. The glory's got to hit it, but it happens through adequate rest. Because you can't really operate when you're bone tired. That's right. The devil will get you. He'll get you in, the, in fatigue. That's what fasting, when you're fasting and bringing people through deliverance, make sure I don't go and, and start casting out devils on a water fast. God bless those that do. But I was given the tip and the heads up when you're casting out de now healing ministry all day long. Someone else need a breakthrough in prophecy all day long. But deliverance ministry, demons coming out. You need Protein. some green beans. You need a salad in your stomach. You When you come up off that fast. Stop putting something in the tank before you do deliverance you need because protein. they will zap you. The demon will come out straight away, but you're going to have some warfare to deal with when you have nothing on your stomach. That's what That's happened right. to me in Nashville. That's right. So talking about that bathing. Okay. The, the bath, please. Because black ball spirits, Let me tell y'all how to do oh. Let me tell y'all how to take a spirit bath. Okay. This is oh, how you Jesus. take a spirit bath. When you perform <laughs> deliverance. It's called a spiritual bath. This is what you do. Oh, my God. You get in the shower and you take the face towel of your choice. You can do dial soap. You can do dove. Now, you got to explain that because a you lot of they listen. don't know what that is. I'm good in there. You can do caress soap. Whatever soap you like. It don't even matter. It could be a Johnson & Johnson bar of soap. And you scrub it together with water and you wash your body and you rinse off and you jump out and you dry off. Do not go in taking spirit baths, adding all these potions and salt and stuff to your water. Now, I hear somebody saying, what about, you know, bath salts and stuff out of bath and body works? Oh, most definitely. That's just, you know, if you want to exfoliate your skin and stuff like that, yeah, do that. But there is... um. A practice, and it is a wicked practice that will even teach you to anoint your water even with oil. And they'll go as far as saying and quote Psalms 27, Psalms 24, and you know, and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of biblical going spirit, on. Spirit, right you know, I'm I was actually joking when I said, Let me show you how to take a spirit bath. Spiritual baths are not 
of God because it's connected to a witchcraft realm. I don't care if it's just the olive oil with four or five mustard seeds in the bottle. If the Lord did not tell you to anoint their water, don't do it. Then you're outside of the will of God. I don't, I don't mean no harm. We're not religious, okay? We don't throw oil on everything. Sometimes we're casting devils out with the sweat of our brow. Sometimes it's with the water bottle. Sometimes it is with the oil. I'm not saying that there's something wrong with the oil. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying to you, don't get so religious to where you feel like that because you did not have oil that you bathing didn't work. No, right. dial soap works just fine. It kills bacteria too. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of the blood it. still works. It too. still works, and your prayer life and your relationship with the Lord is all you need. You don't need the salt. And if I hear one more saint say demons don't attack me because I throw salt over my shoulders and on my porch, you a witch. And ammonia on my walls and water and. No, I wash you my just walls. Got a loud house. I, just, <laughs> I wash my walls with pine salt. When I wash them, I got kids. I don't have time to wash walls all the time. I'm <laughs> sorry. You say? Anyway, you know, I'm y'all, saying, just bathe the American that's way. That's it. The American way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Soap, water. You want to get tips on right. how to save up on soap? Catch my coupon in class. Okay. All right. We're I gonna, don't have one of those. I'm joking. <laughs> she will. But we're going to oh, pray. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's called bibliomancy. Mancy is another yeah. word for divination. And yeah. bibliomancy is the use of the word of God in witchcraft. And people are doing it more and more and more nowadays. Yes. Okay? Yes. Yes. I'm going to say this prayer. Tell your wife about another cake for me. <laughs> we're going to say this prayer and wrap up. Okay. Yes. All right. I just pray this blesses you, okay? Father, we just thank you, God. God, we decree, God, tonight, God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we shall condemn. We are established in righteousness and yes, oppression yes. is far from us. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yes, Lord. We take the shield of faith and we quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Yes, Lord. We take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and use it against the enemy. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. We are redeemed from poverty. We are redeemed from sickness. We are redeemed from spiritual death. Yes, our God. hand is upon the neck of the enemy. Yes, we anoint Lord. our head with oil, God. Our cut runs over. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We are anointed to preach, to teach, to heal, to cast out demons. Yes. We receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and reign in life through Christ Jesus. Yes, we decree that we have life and that more abundantly. We walk in the light as he is in the light. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. My God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the head and not the tail. We decree things. We decree a thing and it shall be established in our lives. We overcome all because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We stand in the evil day, having our loins girded about with truth. And we have the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. We take the shield of faith and we are covered with the helmet of salvation. And we use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We decree it now tonight, Father, that we are delivered. You're broken free from the power of darkness and translated and transmigrated in to the kingdom of God's dear son. We tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and it shall by no means harm us. We do not have the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. We have favor with God and with man. We decree on tonight that wealth and riches are in our house and our righteousness endures forever. We decree tonight, God, that we will be satisfied with long life and God will show us his salvation. We dwell in secret places of the home. We we release your people, God, from the waterless pit tonight, God. We thank you, Lord God, that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. 
and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. No evil shall befall us, and no plague shall come near our dwelling. My children are taught of the Lord, and great is their peace. Yes, Lord. We decree that we are strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. We are rooted and grounded in love. God bless. We bless. We bless our natural enemies. And we come over. We overcome all evil with good. We decree these things tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, I bind up, God, any candle magic, any incantation, any hex, any vex, any retaliation, any black ball spirit coming up against your people. We blacken the eye. We blacken the eye. We gouge out the eye, the third eye of the enemy. Silence every hyena, every wolf, God, every predator. In the name of Yeshua, every destroying spirit. Every spirit of confusion and bewilderment. We break you now in the name of Jesus. The blood break you. The blood drive you back. Buckets of blood. The blood of Yeshua. The blood of Yeshua is against you, Satan. The blood of Yeshua is against you, Hasatan. We break the chain of the enemy. Break every fetter. In the name of Yeshua, fire be set to the soul. Yes, God. Break it now. Yes, Lord. Break every spirit of infirmity on the body. Break it on the mind. Break it on the soul. Break it in the name of Yeshua. Yes, God. We give you the glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. No principality, no power, no rule of darkness, and no spiritual weakness in high heavenly places. No imp, no foul spirit, no lying, immoral, subtle, familiar spirit has reigned over us. We blind the eyes of every eavesdropper, every witch, every warlock, every witch doctor, every shaman, every practitioner of black and white magic. Hey! A firewall around your people, a fire hedge of protection. And we clear their air spaces in the name of Yeshua. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for enlarging our space, enlarging our mantle, enlarging our place in deliverance. God, that will not operate in deliverance ministry, but deliverance yes, ministry will operate in us. In the name of Yeshua, we decree it. Come on, say, I decree it. I decree it. I decree it. That's it. That's it. Yes, Lord. I decree it. Hiya, ba, 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 Every ounce of magic that came through the television, that came through witchcraft books, that came through items, we break it, we break it, we break it, we break it. The blood, 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 we damn up every vortex. We bring a standstill to all warfare in the name of Yeshua. Fire! Yes, God. Fire! Yes, God. You hear me speak fire. Go my red baby. Kako do kota ba baby. Fire. Fire. Fire in your spirit. Drive out everything not like you. The fire of God. In the name of Yeshua. God bless you. We got to go. We got to go. I know. We got to go. Woman of God. Because it's going to receive this. Because we want to save this. If we got to come back on and pray, we'll do that. But receive your deliverance. Somebody else needs to see this. Amen. God bless y'all. God bless you. Amen.